Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about past life regression. I'm going to teach you guys what it is, why I got into it, what it means for us in this lifetime on a big scale. I think it's a really interesting topic. Let's start. We waited about 10 minutes for people to get here. So today we're going to talk about past lives and past life regression and what the possibility of past lives means for us in our current lives and how it relates to karma and our purpose in the world, in the universe. So what is past life regression? Past life regression is a technique that uses hypnosis to uncover the possibility of trauma in past lives that affects a person's current mind and mind state. And we'll talk more about the actual technique later, but right now let's, I want to tell you how I came to find out about it. I think it was a sign. It was the universe steering me in this direction. The reason why I recently found an interest in past life regression is because I'm certain that the universe is steering me to this path. A friend called me randomly. She's been calling me. She was calling me for like a month just to tell me about this one book she read that changed her life. She kept reminding me about it until I finally bought it on my Kindle and I started to read it. And I'm so glad that I did. She was right. It was life changing. It gave me a new perspective. And the book is called Many Lives, Many Masters by Brian L. Weiss. He's this uh, psychiatrist. He's extremely intelligent, educated, an interesting man. He started off as a regular psychiatrist and he became a hypnotherapist who specializes in past life regression. And he, the quote, um, never give your power to someone else originates from one of his books, actually. I believe it was like in the 80s, Dr. Weiss had a patient come in. This is what he describes in the book. Dr. Weiss had a patient come into, into his office that would just change his life forever. She had extreme phobias, anxiety, depression. They were debilitating. They did not allow her to live a normal life. And when Dr. Weiss realized that regular talking therapy would not work and medicine did not work for her, he decided to try some new methods that he had always been kind of wary of, that other people were talking about. It was like, it was pretty new wave and he was not really into it, but he wanted to try for this patient. So through hypnosis, Dr. Weiss was able to take his patient through a dozen past lives and heal trauma that occurred there and that was plaguing her in her current life. It actually turned out that this patient had 86 past lives, but they were only able to tap into about 12 because those are the ones that she had trauma in. So, for example, in one of her past lives, she was a woman, it was, I think it was like 1300, something like that. She was a woman, she had a baby in her current life. This patient did not have any children um, in, in her past life. In this past life, she had a baby and her and her baby drowned in a, a massive natural catastrophe. And in her current life, this patient was deathly afraid of drowning. So they worked through that and she worked through the trauma and she got over this phobia. So, um, what Dr. Weiss discovered a lot of really interesting things while he was doing this hypnosis. The least interesting was that we have past lives, believe it or not. What was really interesting is that he was able to channel these masters, these higher beings through his patient in between her past lives. So once one of her lives ended and she died, it would be every single time she would feel like she was floating, no matter what she was, she would be different characters. She would be a man, a woman, um, an old woman, a young kid. At the end of her life, she would float. She would feel like she's floating up and then she'd be in this resting, waiting period. And when she was in this period, these masters spoke through her to Dr. Weiss. He discovered that groups of souls often travel together because his patient would often see her mom or her boyfriend or her dad appearing as different characters in her various lives. Some people she wouldn't know, they wouldn't always be 
um, continuous in all of her lives, but more often than not, all the, the souls would travel together. Okay, so in this peaceful resting period, the soul gets to choose whether to continue or to rest and when to do it. We also get to choose who our parents are. Nobody is a coincidence. So during this rest in his office, Dr. Weiss began to receive messages from the masters. The masters would speak to this patient in a voice that sounded nothing like her, using words she would never use. And they taught Dr. Weiss lessons about humanity and life in the universe. And they wanted him to spread this knowledge because it would be useful to mankind. So what the possibility of past lives and what Dr. Weiss learned, what it, why it's beneficial to us is because it teaches us that we have nothing to be afraid of when it comes to death. One thing that holds humans back, that holds humanity back from so much is our fear of an impending death. There is nothing more ubiquitous than dying. And we all know that, and that is terrifying to us. So what if we learn that death is not what we think it is? that we are never born and we never die. We just continue until we ascend. It's a realization in that if something, if, if we were able to replicate his studies in a mass, a mass sort of research, if we were able to realize that this is truth, that what he found was true, he did this with many patients. It wasn't just one patient. And I know that there are many, many people doing this. So, if we were able to replicate the results over and over again so that we can scientifically know that this is true, humanity would be changed forever because our perception of death and dying and our perception of life would be changed. And what it also means is that there's a reason why we're here. And that would change so many people's lives to know that we're all here for a reason. There's the Japanese concept of I don't know how to say it, it's ikigai, I think. I'll tell you guys about this more later. And it's basically their recipe for happiness. And it has been studied to be the reason why they have so many centurions, so many people over a hundred living in Japan and on an island right next to Japan because they feel that they have a purpose in this world. So what if we suddenly realize that we all have a purpose in this world? that we're all here to transcend, that we're all here to fix our karma and to help other people fix their karma. Like energy, we're never created or destroyed. Our souls never die and are never born. We go from one lifetime to the next and our purpose, according to the masters, is to learn and to improve. Karma is a real thing and what we do in our lives will carry on to the next one as a debt we must pay. If we live easy lives right now in our current lives, we can't assume that we've paid our debts in past lives. If we live hard lives, if we know if we have hardships in our lives, we can assume that we do have a debt to pay and a lesson to learn. We have a purpose. No one is lucky or unfortunate. We are all just here for a specific reason. So the possibility that this is true, it can give our lives a lot more meaning. We can finally come to understand and agree about death, which is the great unknown. We can understand the purpose of life, which is also the great unknown. If we all agree that knowledge and improvement and paying our karmic debts is what life is about, we would stop chasing money and big mansions and uh, jobs and we would we would start chasing enlightenment and helping each other to pay our karmic debts and to be better people and to set our future lives up for greatness and in this book basically it does say that we are at different levels of consciousness and we come here for a reason so you can literally move up in the totem pole of life until you've reached the point of a master, until you no longer have to return to your human body 
to learn a lesson because you've paid all your debts, you've learned all you need to learn, and you've helped others. So from what I understood from this book, you continue to get better in your lives until you become a master and no longer have to return to your human body. So I think that conquering the, this fear of death will lead us to much happier lives. If we know, if we really know that we will be reunited with everyone that we love over and over again until we are all liberated and until we're all pure souls, how can we ever be afraid of anything ever again? If we know for a fact that all the hardships that we're facing are here for a reason and that we're, we must learn from them, how can we ever feel ungrateful again. If we mess up in this life, it's okay because you can atone for it in your later life. But we have to understand that our karma decides our future existence. That means that our actions in this life are being observed. They are, they do have consequences. And this is not a scary thing. I think this is a beautiful thing because it gives us purpose. It gives us an assignment to wake up every morning and be the best that we can be and to really analyze our situations in our life, to really look at what we do, our day-to-day -day decisions as something that matters, that matters in the grand scheme of things. The possibility that this might be true is the best news we could possibly receive. So, so many religions have some sort of belief in reincarnation or past lives. It's an idea and a possibility that it's been toyed with since the beginning of time, since the beginning of thought. Like the ancient Indian Upanishads, the literature mentions past life regression and that karma is the sum of a person, person's actions in this and previous states of existence. Hindus do believe, uh, from what I understand and from what I know, um, Hindus believe that karma will decide a person's fate in future existences. So if you believe in karma, you believe that what we didn't make right in our last life will persistently present itself in this one. And you also understand that karma can be reserved and resolved. Now, past life regression, the actual therapy, it's done in a psychotherapeutic setting. And it's been proven in cases worldwide to heal, help heal patients from anxiety, depression, and other mental illnesses. But you do not need to go to a therapist to work through past life trauma or to resolve your karma. Once you understand that your life is meaningful and purposeful, and that clearing your karma and helping other people clear theirs is worth is a worthwhile way to spend a lifetime, you just need to understand a little bit more about how to erase the energy carried over from former lifetimes, how to work through that karma. Where is my live stream? How am I doing on time, guys? How long have we been here? Doesn't even say. <laughs> Okay, so there are five things I need you guys to know about karma and how to understand past lives. One, karma has no expiration date and never gets lost. And that means if you have unresolved karma from three lifetimes ago, it gets built up increasingly until it is worked through. We take on what we haven't worked through life after life after life. Without even knowing it, you may be experiencing karma that originated several lifetimes ago. But don't worry because you can confront this outstanding karma and lighten your energetic load by analyzing it and by working, by realizing, by being, by opening your mind to this lesson that you're supposed to learn. And it's just going to keep replaying in your life over and over again until you do learn it. So don't worry if you if you think that there's some sort of lesson that you should have learned three years ago and you didn't because you'll get a chance to work through it again. The second thing I want you to understand is that no one in your life is a coincidence. No one. Like I said before, Dr. Weiss does believe that souls often travel through lifetimes together. And I mean, doesn't that kind of make sense? Our like family relationships, how close we are to these people. I think that there's some sort of power there that could only be carried through several lifetimes. Your closeness to your mother and your father and your siblings and your uh, grandparents and like, or your best friends even, or the love of your life, those kind of energies, that, that energy, 
I don't believe that it can be contained in just one lifetime. I think that those kind of relationships play out over several lifetimes and that those bonds get stronger over lifetimes. So uh, many past life therapists also believe that we choose our parents and certain people in our lives either to teach them or to learn from them. Like we like we te- we pick our parents to learn from them or to teach them, for example. That's something that's almost completely agreed upon. So everyone is placed into our lives strategically and for a reason. And the course of karmic relationships plays out as planned, despite what our free will does. We do have free will, but karma and the plan is almost stronger than that free will. We can make different decisions and choices, but our karma has caused the things to happen to happen for a reason. To deal with this, you should take inventory of your life. Acknowledge the role of each person in your life, good and bad, and think to yourself, why are they there? What have they come to teach you and vice versa? What have you come to teach them? The bad thing that happened with that one person, what were you supposed to learn from that? What is it that you're meant to experience with this person or with this, these people? The sooner that you acknowledge the truth of the karma you share with someone, whether good or bad, the sooner you can settle it. So the third thing I want you to understand is that what you have done, you become. Your actions throughout your various lifetimes become the circumstances of your being. So this could seem bad, I understand, but perhaps you stole in another lifetime and now you keep getting robbed or stolen from in like more figurative ways. But the good news is that you can start creating good karma today and working through that bad. It's not your fault. I mean, it's it really isn't in the grand scheme of things. You can look at it as your fault, but it's not because your current life, you can't have consciously decided what your past life was. Right. So. All you can do now is to atone for that. Work through the bad to not only have a better, happier life in this lifetime, but to set yourself up for good for future existences. Number four, something that is very interesting and very personal to me, and I'm going to explain to you guys why it means it is that roles often reverse. Um, My relationship with my mother is explained by this and the therapist that I went to see, which I'll tell you guys about, she told me that I was once my mom's mom in a past life. And if you know my relationship, excuse me, my relationship with my mom, you'd understand because she's literally like my teenage daughter. (laughs) So in this lifetime, though I am her daughter, I still take on the role of mothering her sometimes. And she's kind of, she really is kind of like my daughter. So positions shift throughout lifetimes based on karmic need. And so whatever dynamic is needed to repair or to heal karma will be manifested through changing roles in our cycles of lives on earth. So if you need to learn a lesson by being somebody's parent, you're going to become their parent, maybe your brother's parent or your grandfather's parent. My psychiatrist, it was the craziest thing. Her, her boyfriend was his own grandfather. I don't, I'm not exactly sure how that worked out. Apparently he died before he was, before her boyfriend was born. So he had to come back in a certain way. It's really crazy, crazy things. But if we are open to this possibility, it just means so much good for us. So the fifth thing I want you to understand is that karma repeats to produce new results. It doesn't repeat to cause us pain. You might think that something's happening over and over again and you're, you know, so hurt by it. It's like, why me? But it shouldn't be like that. You need to understand that if something's repeating, it's because you have to learn something from it. It's to teach us to take different actions for different results. If you're attracting the same type of partners into your life or the same type of people into your life over and over again, it's time to stop and inspect your choices. Why do similar people keep coming in? What should you be doing differently? This kind of work calls for honest introspection and evaluation of your faults and weaknesses, which is a hard thing to do, but it's a healthy way to work through your karma. And it's just going to leave you as a more enlightened, spiritually light, energetic, happy person. And you're going to work towards having a better life in this lifetime and future lifetimes. So, 
after reading this book, I felt like I needed to see what it's really about. So I did a little research until I found who I think is the only credible past life regression therapist in all of LA. I made an appointment with her and upon my first visit, I discovered she had been taught the method from the man who wrote the book I read, Dr. Brian L. Weiss. This is not a coincidence that I just chose her blindly. Like I just decided that this is who I'm going to. I energetically felt like I needed to go to this woman. So I've only had one session and it was very therapeutic, but we didn't begin actual regression. Uh, that begins in the second or third sessions, and I will update you about it once I do those. Um, but I, I took a lot away from it, and it really did change my perspective on life. And I think that if you guys could adopt some of these thoughts and some of these possibilities into your own life, it could make you happy people. And I know you're all happy already, and you're all working on your happiness with me. And I just think that it's something that's so valuable to just take into your life. Okay, so that's it for the lesson, my loves. Let me take a quick water break, okay? And then I'm coming back to the chat to answer questions. So let's start asking questions or whatever you guys wanna talk about. All right, I'll be right back. 